Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So I recently did a post on Facebook where I asked people to send in their portfolio for online review and I got a huge, huge, huge response. I think something like 50 or 60 people responded, which is awesome. Now I'm not gonna do 50, 60 portfolio reviews in a row. I'm gonna pick one here and there and I kind of mix them up with the other videos. And that said, today we're gonna to check out the portfolio of Derek Termulo. I hope I pronounced his name right. And he has some awesome work to show, All right? Here we go. Okay, everybody, well, we're doing another portfolio review. This time we're looking at the portfolio by Derek Termulo. I hope I pronounced that right. He's from the Philippines. And um, yeah, this time we're on Behance. Now, the thing is this, when we talk about portfolios, um, you can go with ArtStation, you can go with Behance, you can have your own website, what to do, what not to do, right? Now, it's pretty personal. I would say most 3D artists tend to use ArtStation, but uh, whatever works for you, right? And in this case, I get the idea that Derek does a bit more than just uh, 3D. So we'll find out, okay? Now, when it comes to a portfolio, as uh, per usual, my first aim is to find out what is the portfolio about? What is the goal? So does Derek want to be hired as a freelance artist? Does he want to be hired by a studio as an employee? Does he want to sell stuff online? Is he an influencer? And does he want to achieve more traffic to his social media? So that's the first thing I want to find out. Looking at this opening page, it's not immediately obvious. What I do see is that there's a lot of stuff going on here. We got literally almost everything. We got cars, we got props, we got interiors we got arch fizz we got everything um which is cool i guess um depending again on your goal if you want to show everything that you can do which is okay i guess what you would tend to do is only post your very best work so your very best interior your very best model uh, prop and so forth okay well what I immediately can see here is that the work is of a very high quality. And let me just look at one of these. I saw a chair here somewhere that I thought was amazing. Uh, where'd he go? Where'd he go? This guy right here. First impression on this is that it's absolutely amazing um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, the texturing on the leather, um, the, uh, the whole setup, the depth of field in the scene, the lighting, the shadows, I absolutely love it. Let's see if there's anything else that we can go through looking at this. There's no wireframe that I can find immediately. There's no um, uh, ambient occlusion pass, no UV overview. So I literally have no idea how he created this, right? Um, looking at this, what's the software used? Maybe something down here, no. What's the software used? Uh, what's the process? What's the pipeline? And so forth. Now, looking at this, like I said, I like it a lot. Um, if I had to make a comment on it, and um, this is very good quality, but if I had to, I would say a couple of very minor things. First of all, these lines of these studs, or whatever they're called, yeah? they're a little bit too perfect they're too straight you would have minor deviations here and there just so it looks like human work right you might have some little scratches or dings on the wood um, and as far as the texture on the table a little bit too uniform right you would have slightly lighter areas in the parts where the wood connects right there maybe uh, some areas that have been touched more than others because of picking up and moving around this little table and so forth. But that said, absolutely gorgeous, nice piece, right? Okay, let's go back. Now, this is pretty interesting here. I see a lot of uh, lines going on and let's see what that's all about. Okay, so this seems to be a setup scheme here. Uh, let's see, too bright and so forth. Now this is very interesting because this allows me to get a um, kind of an idea of what his thought process is. 
And if I am uh, looking to hire him as an employee, I want to know that, right? How do you go through a project? How do you set it up? How do you work it out, right? Trying to see if I can see the purpose of this shot just by looking at it. It looks to be like a lighting scheme at some point, but I do see other sketches as well. Um, not quite sure. And again, no UVs, no um, wireframe models, no explanation of how and what and so forth. Now, I'm not too familiar with Behance, so I don't know how that works. In ArtStation, you definitely have the option to do that. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. What do we got here? Okay. Um, let's, okay. T-shirt designs. That's uh, pretty straightforward, I would say, but very diverse. So I kind of like that. Let's look at this guy right here. Archfits. Okay. Now, first of all, um, there are some characters set up here for skill reference, which is always nice, right? Lighting set up very, very nice as well. Um, it gives a good uh, setting in the environment, a couple of cars going on here. Um, yeah, I think that fits. Um, yeah, again, I'm just looking, and the reason why I'm pausing here is because I've never seen this either, right? This is the first time I'm seeing it. I'm trying to collect my thoughts here. I would say in a situation like this, it says here, uh, AQ Vino and Partners, apparently this was a client project, right? Uh, okay, so external architect designed by Arch Ian Cruz. So I really don't know what Derek did in this. Did he do the lighting and texturing or what? Because it's his portfolio and it says that the um, design was by somebody else. Maybe it was a 2D sketch on a piece of paper and uh, Derek did the actual 3D model. I don't know. And I don't know because it's not mentioned, right? And again, I want to know what he did, how he did it, why he did it, and what he wants to achieve by doing that, right? That is the story to tell. All right, let's go back. We'll do one more. And let's see, something different. So we did interiors. We have some props going on. That's another interior. And uh, let's see here. We've got some food stuff going on. Now this is, um, I'm looking at the moon here. Okay, let's look at this car. Okay, Lambo. All right, well, first of all, the uh, putting it in the scene in the sense that it fits is very, very well done. Looking at the shading down here, kind of like that, or actually like it a lot. Looking at the lighting on the other cars compared to this car, I would say the light is coming from the proper direction, which is always good. The intensity seems to be the same, which is very nice. You got some reflection going on here that could be true. I mean, if you had something here that wouldn't make sense in this type of environment, it would be noticeable, but that is well, well done. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, it's very, very realistic. And it's actually, as far as placement is concerned, I would say in the top 10 of what I've ever seen. So very well done. Again, same story here on the model. Okay, what has been done by Derek? I assume the entire car. Uh, what's his workflow? UVs, bake maps, and so forth. As a, a studio or potential client, I want to understand his skill set. I want to know if it's a proper topology. I want to know if the model looks okay, and so forth and so on, right? Okay. That in a nutshell is it. One more comment. Um, it's uh, very nice to show that you're socially responsible and wearing a mask and everything. But when it comes to putting a photo of yourself on your portfolio and you are wearing a cap, dark sunglasses and a mask, it looks like you're trying to hide yourself, right? I don't think that's the best approach if you want to be uh, open and communicative towards clients. It might look cool, but maybe professionally uh, speaking, not the best choice. Okay, that's it for this review. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.